Talk about what's happened since the film has come out and since it's been uh, sh- uh, shown in in Aberdeen. Well, I mean, what we've done so far is really only show it to uh, at festivals. We've had the you know, hot docs. We had Sheffield Documentary Festival because the Edinburgh Film Festival rejected the film. Um, uh, Scottish government funded. And uh, it's a similar story. When we were making the film, we got no funding from the creative agency in Scotland, Creative Scotland. Uh, we got no funding from the Scottish broadcasters. Um, uh, and so essentially all the names you see at the end there are all the people who contributed to it through the crowdfunding, which was the only way we managed to get the, the film finished. Um, so at the moment, what we're doing, we had the... Because it was rejected by the Edinburgh... Film Festival, we showed it at uh, in Aberdeen and had a green carpet premiere and all the um, residents came out. And um, it was a, it was quite an extraordinary night, I have to say. I mean, I was quite worried because they are, you know, I was worried to see how they would react to the film. And they, they reacted very positively, I'm pleased to say, you know. And, uh, and I was, uh, you know, I'm very grateful to them, actually, for all the time they gave me, obviously, whilst making it. So that was a, a real kind of litmus test. But... The cinema then said, um, we would really like to keep it running because all these people, have, we, they said, we've notched up the highest, the fastest advanced ticket sales since Harry Potter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they kept it running over, over um, three weekends and um, they, they were just astounded. I mean, the, the, the people running the cinema, it's a 280-seater cinema and they were filling it out. Um, so what we've decided to do now, they, they wanted to keep it going, but we've said, let's just have a little breather until we get the Glasgow and Edinburgh um, premieres done. And then um, we just heard uh, this week that Michael Moore has selected it for the Traverse City uh, Film Festival, which will be the uh, US premiere official. Um, and then um, and then hopefully uh, another screening or two in the States. Um, the, the Hamptons Film Festival look like they're going to take it as well. So... So it's exciting, but it, you know it's very difficult. Once you, I'm, I'm learning because this was my first feature-length uh, documentary. That I thought that once you'd make the film, there would be, you know, it would then go to kind of get snapped up, and that would be it. But it's not at all. You actually learn. You, you're then spending a year, probably best part of a lot, well, a year, and, and you know, talking to other filmmakers like uh, and Laura, who did Windfall, who's here. You know, I mean, you know, she's. She's been doing the circuit really for that amount of time, and it does. So that's really where I'm at now. And you know, and, and obviously coming here is, is great to be able to preview it in front of a, a, an American audience for the first time. Uh, we can take some questions. Uh, raise your hand, and I will uh, call on you yeah, over there. Funnily enough, um, uh, we didn't get permission to use the Golf Channel f- footage. Um, uh, we knew that if we asked them for it, we knew that they wouldn't give it to us because Donald Trump has control over the editorial control over the over the programs. Um, so uh, we decided to we consulted with our lawyers and we decided to use it under fair use. Um, however. Um, we then heard uh, had a letter uh, just before I came out here from the Golf Channel saying that they were going to take legal action against us for using it, um, and so we we um, we consulted with a very good lawyer in fair use lawyer in California who um, is dealing with the, the case for us. But I think it's a very important piece of footage because in the context of watching the Golf Channel here in the U.S., if you watched that show it wouldn't really mean much. You'd see Donald Trump sort of saying, oh, there's a house, I want to get rid of it. Um, and you'd probably think, oh, it's some crappy old house and you know, it's probably some guy who's moving out there anyway. But it, in the context of the actual film, when, you, when you've got to know David Mill and you know that that's actually his property he's talking about, then it, you know, I think it's very important. Um, so that's why I felt it was, it was entirely justifiable to use it. And, and you know, sometimes you know, we've had to obviously pay out more money to, to hire a lawyer. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's very important to stand your ground on these things. And, and, and so, yeah, so, so that's, when that's, you know, that's what happened with that. Question there? Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I I was amazed really because the reason I made wanted to make the film, I live forty miles south of where this was happening, and and the local newspapers had all been saying, oh, this is a fantastic thing for Scotland. There's economic benefits. You know, Donald Trump, this um, amazing. Um, tycoon from New York is coming over. He's going to deliver all these local jobs. It's going to be fantastic for the area. And I just didn't believe it. I mean, and also I, I was because I'd done a documentary for the BBC about um, coast man-made coastal erosion, and I knew a little bit about sand dunes. And nobody seemed to be talking <laughs> about that side of the story. And and so it seemed to me that the the newspapers were certainly in some kind of Coats, you know, whether it was they just they had obviously taken an editorial line, which is fine, but it was you know the level of that editorial line was quite kind of shocking. I found so there was that, and then when I started to film up there, and then I found you know things like the water supply being cut off to an eighty-six-year-old woman, and and the way the police were reacting to the local residents just really shocked me. I mean, I I've with my colleague Richard Finney, who's the Canadian producer of the film, who lives in Montrose actually with me, and. Uh, in the same town and um you know we've done quite a lot of work together in afghanistan pakistan we've done sort of you know hostile environment training and this kind of thing and and there i am in scotland you know like sort of dealing with this on my doorstep it was quite extraordinary and, and you know that that sort of that i couldn't help but feeling the residents had a point when they were saying you know we you know, if we make a complaint to the police they don't do anything but if if donald trump's workers make a complaint to the police then they they come running um, and then, you know, when we approached Creative Scotland, which is the kind of supposed sort of agency for promoting film, I always thought that that was, you know, if you're a Scottish filmmaker and you wanted to make a film about a Scottish story, that they would be there to kind of help and support you. But uh, but no, you know, it seemed in my in this case they 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 promised us ten thousand pounds development money to to try and get the film started. And then the day I was going to get the the email saying that it was coming through it was uh, I had an email instead saying no you're not getting it and you know and when I you know I spoke to this officer from the from this agency and then she said oh well I'm I'm livid it's never happened before um, and you know I just kept feeling there was this feeling there was nothing to kind of you know dispel that feeling either that there's just seemed to be something really kind of bizarre here that, that uh, they just and the, the promises just didn't seem to stack up you know the under scrutiny these economic predictions so i mean so i never really got answers but almost more questions in a way has the golf course been they're not going to build it anymore is that correct no they're they're building the what they're doing at the moment is they're still building the first golf course so the 18 hole first golf course which is the one I sort of follow them doing the start of um, what they've decided to do is put on hold the hotel and the housing for the moment but as the economist says in the film you know just getting the planning permission is worth hundreds of millions of pounds so securing that planning permission means that Donald Trump could now sell that on to another developer and so you know, it could just be littered with 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 houses, and um, you know, by another developer in a, in say ten years time, or or however long it might take. I thank you very much for coming, and thanks especially to Anthony Baxter. Thank you for, thank you for having me. And thanks. Tim.